Good day, First Baptist Kids. Guess where I am today? I'm back at the church today. Um, today we're going to start a new series, sort of. We're going to be learning the 23rd Psalm. If you've ever heard of that, you can go back and read about it. In Psalms chapter 23, it talks about the Lord is my shepherd. So today's lesson is going to be about the Good Shepherd, which you can read about in John chapter 10, and we'll get to that in just a minute. So, Today we're learning that God guides us like a shepherd guides a sheep. We'll be learning from Psalms 23 for the next few weeks. That's the most famous chapter from the book of Psalms, and it compares God to a shepherd. So let's see how it starts. So what it says is, Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. So what do you think a sheep needs? To have a sheep, you think he's bad? So what does a sheep need? Well, a sheep might need food. It might need water, and it might need somewhere, maybe a pen to sleep in, maybe kind of like this, this little makeshift pen that I made here. So sheep is going to need something to eat, something to drink, and it's going to need shelter, just like us, right? So like many habitats, um, the sheep need to provide with everything that they need. Later we'll learn about sheep and guide them as we learn how God guides us. So now I'm going to read from another part of the Bible where Jesus talks about being our shepherd. As I read out, you can move, you could actually make your own sheep out of cotton balls if you chose to do so. So here's what it says. This is John chapter 10 verses 1 through 5. It says, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he's gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So we're going to get to that. What does that mean? So what did you, did you, do to have, what did you have to do to guide your sheep? Well, what does your mom and dad have to do to guide you? They have to feed you. They have to water you. They have to discipline you sometimes because you're not doing things right or things that are right, making good choices. It's very important at your age. So in what ways does God guide you? Based on what you learn about shepherds, how is God like a shepherd? A shepherd loves his sheep. He guides them to food and water so that they have everything they need. He guides them away from danger so they don't get hurt. God guides us too. God is our shepherd. So the next part of this is going to be we're going to learn about um, we're going to learn more about God being our shepherd. So how many of you guys like M and M's? Brought some M and M's today. You guys know I like food. So what's the right way to eat M and M's? Do you eat them one at a time? Eat the whole handful? Do you sort them by color? Which I actually sorted these by color this time. We have green. Orange, brown, red, yellow, and blue. So how do you sort your how do you sort your M and M's or how do you eat them? Is there a right way or a wrong way to eat them? Well, you may have a way you prefer. It's not necessarily better than someone else's. Sometimes we get the idea that God's way is like that. It's a way, but maybe there are other ways that are just as good. So what if we like our own way better? What if we want to do it our way instead of following God's guidance? We're going to dig into that. So in order to make the most sense of what the Bible says, let's have a specific advanced example of God's way that we don't want to be like. For example, God guides us to obey our parents. Maybe you don't always want to do that, or maybe you'd rather not love your enemies. So now tell your family something God says to do that they'd rather not do. Like maybe I don't want to mow the grass, or I don't want to unload the dishwasher. If you don't know the Bible very well, you can choose from lots of examples. So now keep that in mind as we read some verses about God's way versus our own way. So if I'm going to go to Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 3, it says, the, human belongs the, the humans belong the plans of the heart, but the Lord comes from the pro proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. So these verses say that God exa examines our motives. So motive is why you choose to do something, the reasons we make choices. 
Even when we think we're making good choices, take a minute to examine your M&Ms. Look at the imperfections, like an M stamped wrong, or like this one is kind of groovy. He's kind of, it's like two and one. Or this one actually is cracked. What did you find as you examined your M&Ms closer? What's something God might find if he examined your heart when you don't want to follow his ways? Mm, maybe anger, bitterness, hatred. There's a lot of stuff. Jealousy, covetous, covetousness, which means you want what other people have. When something God might find if he, if he examines your hearts, so you need to ask yourself of that. And you probably have a conversation with God about that. The fact is, sometimes our way might seem right, but we can't see how it affects other people, or we don't know ourselves well enough to know why we want to do it that way. God does see those things, so he guides us to his best ways. When we commit his way to his way, we succeed. So in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25, it says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end that leads to death. So... How did you decide how to make your path? So if we were going to use this um, to make a road, and we made it, um, maybe we gave it some curves, you know, because there's not very many red M&Ms. There's a lot of green ones in this one. But, you know, in Proverbs, it actually, in chapter 3, it talks about trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So you know that still voice, the Holy Spirit speaks into your life to help you to try to help you make good decisions and to stay on the straight and narrow path, just like God does that for us. How did you decide your way sounds better in the situation you thought of earlier? Like when you didn't want to obey your parents, you thought, eh, if I don't, if I don't do the dishes, my mom will just do it. Or if I don't mow the grass, my dad will just do it. I don't have to worry about it. Sometimes there's consequences to bad choices. I didn't give you any information about how to space your M&Ms or where your path was supposed to be. You, have, you just guess what to do. Sometimes we can make paths in life that seem right, but they don't lead to a good place. God knows where the path should end, so he guides us down his perfect path. Let's practice a little scenario game to show you what I mean. It's called What If. We'll start with one of my examples of situations where you'd rather go your own way than God's way. What if my mom told me to go to bed and I disobeyed and I made an excuse I needed to go to the bathroom, I needed to get a drink, or I need to get something out of her car or whatever? What if I let the bathtub fill up and didn't turn the water off? It's going to overflow somewhere, isn't it, at some point in time if it gets too full? If you were tired in school the next day, you might be not be prepared for the test. So if you didn't study for a test, if you stayed up late, you might be tired in school the next day. That might be what if you stayed up late. What if you're tired in school the next day? Sometimes when you don't study for a test, you get you fail the test or you just don't get a good grade. What if, or even if that, you might have to go to summer school. Who wants to go to summer school? Not me. If you have to go to summer school, you might miss out on all the summer camps. Also playing um, what if as a group, have, kids, have you guys hide, um, play in pairs and use your own examples. So play that with your family, what if game. What if the sky wasn't blue? I don't know. I can't imagine it not being blue. In that game, we got to see how each step down the path led us to a worse consequence. On our ways, we can leave, our ways can lead to death, but God guides us to life. So in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, I don't think I looked that one up. So I'll have to look that up for you. So it's Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. And what that says is, as soon as this comes up here, I will tell you. It says, many are the, are the plans in a person's life, but it is the, God's, it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So we might all have plans, and sometimes God 
um, disrupts those plans or sometimes our parents do or whatever. <clears throat> but it really is about making good choices. Bottom line is we can make our own plans, we can go our own way, and we can choose not to follow our shepherd. But God's way is best and we'll be taking a harder path if we go in our own way. Sometimes the world thinks that as long as our choice doesn't hurt someone else, it's fine. But God knows that what will hurt you in the long run. So God guides us to choices and won't, he won't hurt us. So since you know that God's way is best, go ahead and eat the M&M's your way. But remember to listen to God and the only way that you're going to know his voice is by being his word. So don't be bad. Make good choices. Have a great week. Hope to see you soon. God bless. One more time. Oh, what is